Let's take a look at the moment generating function of a binomial random variable. So suppose x is a binomial variable with parameters p and n. So that is to say, we imagine that we have some, um, some experiment with the probability p of success. We repeat that experiment n times. And x um, denotes the number of successes we have after those trials. That's the binomial random variable. And um, so let's uh, compute the uh, moment generating function for x. So this is the expected value of e to the tx. And of course, uh, in our case, this is a discrete variable. So we can write this as the sum over all the possible values that x can take. That's really a sum from i going from um, 0 to n, we have somewhere between 0 and n successes, of the, um, of the, uh, this expression, e to the tx, times the probability, um, I'll just write it like this, times p of x, right? And now, what is p of x for the binomial variable? Um, so, p of x, these are two different p's, of course. I'm sure you can tell the difference in font. Um, this is the um, probability mass function. So p of x is, um, so it's n choose x. So we're saying which of the n trials, um, uh, which x of the n trials gives successes, um, p to the x for those, and 1 minus p to the n minus x for the ones that aren't successes. So this is the um, our particular function, uh, our particular um, mass function. And now we have e to the tx times this, n choose x, p to the x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. And let's, um, we can regroup this a little bit. So this is i equals 0 to n, i equals 0 to n, um, n choose x. Um, I'm going to bring these uh, together because I have e to the t times p um, all to the power um, x, 1 minus p to the n minus x. And, um, Lo and behold, what this thing actually looks like is a, um, is a binomial expansion, right? So this um, is what happens if I were to take um, uh, e to the t times p plus 1 minus p and raise it to the power n. Right? When you foil it out, um, this is exactly what it looks like. Okay, so this is the uh, moment generating function. Right. Okay, so now that we have that, let's use that to quickly see things like um, um, things like the mean and variance of this variable. Let me go ahead and erase this. So, for example, if I look at the first derivative and I plug in 0, this is the expected value of x, aka the mean. And so for this thing, let's take the, uh, let's take the derivative with respect to t. All right, so we have, let's say, n times e to the t p plus 1 minus p to the n minus 1 times the derivative of the inside, which is um, the derivative of this thing, which is p e to the t. And now I'm going to plug in uh, t equals 0. And we get n times p times 1 minus p, or p plus 1 minus p, just a 1. Uh, I get a p there. Uh, e to the 0, that's another 1. Well, so that's np. Okay, the nice familiar expression. Of course, this was not a, a hard thing to know. 
um, if you have a p probability of success each time and you do it n times, how many successes do you expect? n p. We knew that, right? But um, now we know it again. And let's look at the variance. So to do that, I'm going to look at the expected value of x squared. Okay. So the expected value of x squared, as we've seen, is going to be the second derivative um, plugged in 0. So let's take the second derivative. Well, we already took the first derivative over here, so I'm going to differentiate again. So I'll get an n and an n minus 1. I guess I have to do a product rule, which means I should give myself a little more space. So we have an n times an n minus 1 times um, this thing over here, e to the t p plus 1 minus p to the n minus 2 times the derivative of the n side, which is p e to the t. So that whole thing is the derivative of, um, of this part here. Uh, times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second the derivative of this is itself p e to the t marvelous so now we just plug in zero and what do we get n times n minus one um, as, as before, you can see this thing is going to be an e to the 0. I'm going to get a, a p and a minus p. I just get a 1. About just 1 to the whatever is still just 1. And now I have uh, times a p. Let's get rid of that. I have a p here. Um, the e to the t, again, is a 0. Then I get another p, e to the t. So that's a p squared. That's e to the 0, again, from over there. Now this next term, I get an n. Um, again, this term, if I plug in t equals 0, this whole term is 1, so that whole term doesn't do anything, this is a 1, so I just get a p. Okay, so what have we just learned? Um, we've learned that, um, that this is the expected value of x squared. Um, a moment ago, uh, we just showed that the expected value of x was NP. And now putting those things together, we can get the variance. So remember the variance is the expected value of the square minus the square of the expected value. And so what do we got? Expected value of the square was this n times n minus 1 p squared plus n p minus the um, square of the expected value, which is n squared p squared. Okay, and so if I were to um, multiply that out, what do you see? You get this n squared p squared minus n p squared plus n p minus n squared p squared. So these guys um, annihilate each other, and we are left with NP times 1 minus P, that term right there. And that gives us the variance. All right, so that was kind of fun, right?